Okay, in this little clip, I'll show you how to cast cool knife yeah, scales guys, like this. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to cast uh, hybrid knife scales using uh, resin and some other material. In this case, it's a Mikata for knife scales uh, to be wood or I don't know, whatever, brush shavings, anything that you please. So let's get straight into it. I use these for my knives. And uh, I've had a few people asking, so let me show you how it's done. Alright, so what you'll need is I use this product. I'm not promoting it, but this is what I use. It's called Woodcast uh, 30. Get it from AMT Composites in Arsendo. You'll need some wooden little goodies to mix the resin with. Uh, the releasing agent is basically polish which I, in this specific case i'm not going to use if i use a little weight to weigh down the scale because they float in the resin then i just rub the little weight with the releasing agent because that needs to release but the resin releases from the silicon mold no problem you don't need a releasing agent uh, some acetone to wipe stuff off, we've got some toilet paper in case. Uh, definitely need a cloth for wiping stuff down, and then a little scale and something to mix your resin in. Okay, so I'm gonna get straight to it. I try and do it mostly on this uh, pizza box that I've got here. <laughs> Um, you can use newspaper or whatever. Screw this on because the reason is quite difficult to get off your hands and the counter top. So let's get some gloves on, see if I can get these on without tearing them. That's normally my biggest challenge. <laughs> oh, you know what? I forgot to mention something. You also need. Whatever color you want to do, you need, you'll need some type of a pigment, pigment, you get it at the same place, but you can also use a uh, graphite powder uh, and other colorings, as long as it's like a oil based coloring, it should work. But to be on the safe side, I would say rather go for the stuff that they sell at the same place you get the resin. So I'm using it's called the epoxy pigment uh, it's for liquid epoxy urethane colorant cool um, let me show you the molds what i do is my molds at the corners they slope up slightly especially if you put weight on them they tend to go a bit like a banana and then what I get is that the scale is not completely flat. So to counter that, I've just put some toothpicks underneath the uh, scale, the first part, to lift it up slightly. So I've got a, a little bit of a layer of resin to get around those round corners, because then the roundness of the corner will be lower than the part that I'm going to grind away. And then I've propped in a little toothpick over each scale to hold it in place hopefully that does the trick if it doesn't i'll run you around and grab some uh, something to weigh it down with all right so for now these are going to just sit one side they're ready for casting so the mixing ratio for this wood cast is 1 to 60. so for scales it's actually very simple on my side because i go a hundred grams and it's it's ports by weight so very straightforward i go 100 grams of port a and 60 grams of port b so that's your 100 to 60 and that normally works out more or less enough for a scale or two scales so i'm just weighing this out uh, to 100 grams I don't think I've ever gotten it exactly on 100, but yeah, I've got 102. I think if you're slightly, slightly out, it's okay, but if you, I think like 10% out, 
you're gonna have a big problem then there might not be enough of the hardening agent okay so then 60 grams of part B Sorry for the silence, it's just uh, all the concentration this takes, eh? <laughs> Alright, so that's the two-pot resin done. And now you give it a good mix. When you're doing the mixing, it's important to make sure you sort of scratch the, the bottom of the cup and all the corners. If there's any resin that's not mixed in it, and you pour it in, it will end up not curing and just stay like a gooey bit of a mess. Okay. At this stage, I'm not worried about bubbles because uh, once I've casted it, the bubbles do come to the surface and I use a little blowtorch just to warm the surface and break the surface tension and the bubbles pop out. The bench time for this, as far as I remember, is about 40 minutes. So you, you do have a fair amount of time to work with it, but it's definitely best to make sure you got all your goodies ready for action, because that 40 minutes can disappear quite quickly sometimes. I reckon about a 3-4 minute mix is sufficient. And this is a very small volume. If you're doing large stuff, I would I'm sorry, mix a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, we only got a total, total weight of 160 grams here. Okay, so now I'm taking some of the pigment. Uh, when I introduce this, I try and get just like an absolute smidgen of it just to see how strong it is. Some of these pigments are just crazy strong. So you'll check in there, it's literally just like a dot. So I'm going for like a translucent grey and I think just a little bit more should do, do the trick still want it to be fairly see-through looks very dark in the cup there but it's a bit lighter not great lighting under the counter here alright I think that's just about right, maybe a little, 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 little bit more. This is quite tricky to get uh, these colours right, and you only you can't go back. Got one shot. I should actually have a second set of moulds here, in case I stuff a colour up that you can immediately just cast that out and still use it as a scale later on. Add a little, little bit more. So it's better to go baby steps with this because you can't go back. Okay, I'm liking that color. It's just like a gray. For these scales, I'm doing like, I want to get it like a monotone. It's a uh, monochrome. It's black and gray scales with gray resin. And then an etched uh, blade. Let me show you what this blade's going to look like. That's the blade. So that's got a like a satin matte finish. So I think this will all go together quite well. Okay, so here we go. Pouring the resin in now to make sure I double check that I've got the position of. The, the first medium in the right place. 
So I think, I think I can go for it. So here we go. And we'll see now uh, that it looks a lot lighter than in the cup. Um, that's why earlier it looked quite dark, but it's not actually that dark. just got a little bit worried because my 160 grams in the past has been enough but I forgot I raised this whatever the thickness of a toothpick is it must be a millimeter or so and uh, it almost looked like I was not gonna have enough but I've got exactly enough just to cover everything nicely the toothpicks look effective in spinning this down okay so now what I want to try and do is give it uh, some black swirls I think I'm just going to break the surface tension first just get rid of some of those bubbles because I can't see through them so you'll see how, uh, how they disappear so really just a slight little bit of heat uh, doesn't have to be a lot and they, they make their way out of there. <laughs> Pop, they go. All right, so now I can put my little swirls. I'm going to try and put some swirls of black in there. That should do it. Funky. Uh, let's take a clean one. See if I can bring that thing a bit there. There we go. Yeah. So obviously with this, you won't get the scales to be perfectly symmetrical because uh, you won't be able to get swirls to be symmetrical. But it will look cool. There we go. That looks something like uh, looks like those demon rah, stuff on the movies. Eh? <laughs> okay, liquor. So I'm gonna just break the surface tension again, and then I'll come back so every ten minutes and do this for about forty minutes. Um, then the bubbles will stop coming to the top and hopefully they're all out of there hopefully they're finished by then as well because as soon as the resin cures <coughs> the bubbles don't come out anymore you don't need a vacuum chamber for this but there will be very very small bubbles if you've got a vacuum chamber or a pressure vessel then you can get rid of it 100 percent um my heat gun is in the house but you'll when you measure this you should get about, I don't know, 20, uh, even 100% uh, temperature rise. So if you're on like 30 degrees ambient, 20, 30 degrees, it will, it will go up to 40, 60, sometimes even 70. If you're in a hot, humid area, the thermochemical reaction that this has uh, could get it past sort of boiling point. If you're eating 80s, 90s, then this will all just start bubbling and become an absolute mess so it's got to be a fairly cool sort of day uh, a dry area um, that's sort of the ideal conditions okay so i hope that helps uh, if you guys want to give this a bash um, i'll f uh, edit in some pictures of uh, these after the video they come in if the video helped you and you dig it please give us a like there. Appreciate it. Share it, subscribe, all of that. That'd be